Welcome, my name is Harald Sack and this is Knowledge Graphs. Lecture number three, querying knowledge graphs with Sparkle. In this section of the lecture you will learn how to do more complex Sparkle queries. So, let's simply start. Complex query would be, you know, we are in the realm of science fiction, asking which planetary romance science fiction novels are dealing with Mars. Good question. If you look at DBpedia alone, you won't find an answer there. You might find something which is a planetary romance, but finding out there whether it has to do with Mars or not, it's quite a difficulty. However, if you go to Wikidata, you might find out that a novel is dealing with Mars, but you don't know that it's a planetary romance. So that specific kind of genre is there not present. So what we have to do, we have to connect both sources somehow. And one way to do that is called federated queries. In query federation, and this is of course a nice property of Sparkle, you can connect two different data sources, two knowledge graphs together by connecting items, for example, which have the same identifier or which are the same. Of course, they have to be denoted to be the same. This can be expressed here, for example, via OWL same as. We haven't talked so far about OWL, but this simply tells you about the identity of two entities. So here item and WD item, so that's the item in DBpedia and that's the item in Wikidata, they are identical. Whenever there is a connection between them which says OWL same as. So in DBpedia we might find out that exactly this item has the DZT subject planetary romances. However, then in Wikidata, if we draw the connection here between the same identical items, we might find out that, of course, um, this is an instance of a novel, of course, that we are looking for, and um, it somehow has to deal with Mars because we are looking simply here for properties that are connecting it with planet Mars, whatever it might be. However, if this is not there, it would also be interesting to see whether, of course, Mars, the word or the character string Mars, is part of the label of that novel, part of the title. So we are looking for the RDFS label there and are simply then applying a filter expression with a regular expression here by simply filtering the word Mars uh, from it. So we simply look whether the word Mars is contained somehow in the title. And we of course do this with a capital M there and that's important because um, if it would be a small one, of course also other novels that are not dealing with Mars but with something where Mars is part of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, another word would be shown or would show up here. Okay, so Sparkle enables federated query services over several RDF datasets or Sparkle endpoints. And the way how to do that, that is um, arranged with a so-called service objective. The service objective you see here in our query, so what we are querying here is we select all distinct because they might be multiple and we want to have of course only uh, unique uh, labels in there. The labels of here, all of the items that were selected here, WD refers to the item from Wikidata. But first we take here a look at the blue part, which is the DBpedia part. There we specify, okay, first let's deal with the service at DBpedia. So the service directive is followed by the URL or URI of the Sparkle endpoint we are querying first here. And then in curly braces here, you see here um, item subject planetary, DCT subject planetary romances. So we are asking for things which are exactly in that category. And the next thing is, okay, we look at the OWL same as definitions in DBpedia. If you look closer at DBpedia, you will see that each single entity might be the same as an entity in other knowledge or databases. And since there are many of them, so there are also connections, for example, to, uh, to, to reference data in the German National Library and stuff like that, and we are not interested in that one, we are only looking for the Wikidata stuff there, so we have to filter out from the URI we see there the term 
wikidata.org because then we see this is a Wikidata identifier. And if this is identical to a Wikidata identifier, then it's selected here in the blue part. Then we are connecting it conjunctively with another service directive and this here is targeting towards the Wikidata Sparkle endpoint. And here we simply say, okay, we grab again, come back to this WD item, we are taking it or, or, or using it here again and say, okay, this one should have a label which is a WD item label. And we do a filter expression here and the filter expression says, yeah, of course, we are looking only at the English version language. And uh, another thing we are looking for here is the WD item should be connected then to the planet Mars. That's Q111. Or, so connected by union, um, the label that we have here should be filtered for the word Mars. Looks quite complicated. Look at it, try it out, modify it yourself. And then we can run here exactly that kind of Sparkle query. So let's simply see what will be the result of that. And then you see here we have several answers, not much. So we have in the result five novels. So what we have here is The Warlord of Mars, A Princess of Mars, Aelita, and Journey to Mars and Outlaws to Mars. So we have here one which is or seems to be connected directly to the planet Mars and the others refer to Mars already in their titles. Um, yeah, so the nice thing is there, let's simply try out here the second one. What you can do here, of course, is you can arrange it then in a type of timeline. And you see here, yeah, that's the nice cover of A Princess of Mars. And this here is the cover of Aelita. Okay. So that would be the result of our federated query in Sparkle. Wow, so that's quite a feature, isn't it? Let's go to the very next um, feature that Sparkle is also offering us. So the next feature would be variable assignments. Why do we need that? Let's have a look at an example. So what we want to do next is we want to select all authors with their notable science fiction works and they should be ordered by the year of publication. The problem we have there is we, we know already part of the, the query. We have seen this in our last lecture. Um, what we need here, of course, is we, we need to identify what is an author. So we see here an author is someone who has the occupation writer. And then also um, we want to look of, at the notable works of the author, which will be assigned here to the variable book. And then, of course, we need the publication date. That's that one. However, the publication date is not necessarily given with a year. It's a date expression. So it can be a specific day in a year. We have to filter out the year here. That's important. Okay. And of course, we are not talking about all potential authors. We have to uh, restrict this by another constraint here. And we simply say, okay, here the genre should be, of course, science fiction then. Okay. And then comes the new thing. So what we do here is we define a new variable that will be bound here. We will bind a new thing, so date, to a new variable that we call year. And what we do there is we are using here a modifier, so that's the function year, that extracts from a date expression the year only. And this we bind here to a new variable called year. And that year also then is here referred to in the query string that we have here, so in the select string. So that's one of the variables we want to see. And since, of course, we also might have, let's say, non-valid date expressions and the year might then become something strange, we only look at those who are really bound also to um, a year, which means where the year is also then um, successfully trans. Uh, transformed from the date expression. Of course, what we do next then, of course, is uh, it should be ordered and then we order it simply by year. Okay, let's see what happens if we try it out here on the Sparkle endpoint. So here we have exactly our query and we carry it out. It might take a while and then you see here, oh yeah, so 
This is our result ordered by year and you see the year here in the very last uh, column and it starts rather early in the year 100 followed then by the next one in the year 1627. So it's interesting to see that we have such old um, science fiction novel. So the one here is from Antonius uh, Diogenes and it's called The Wonders Beyond Thule. So interesting. And then we have Francis Bacon, New Atlantis, yeah, from the 17th century and so on. And you find, of course, then also newer novels that are here and that are here from the 20th century then, of course. So this is how it works. We have a new variable here that we have bound in the Sparkle query and that is here. Okay. Let's continue and let's go on to the next problem. The next thing that we learn are so-called aggregate functions. Interestingly, aggregate functions are functions like, for example, I want to count results here and want to see how many lines are returned. Or I have values that should be summed up, for example, over many or over many result lines. And this is so-called aggregation function that we do here. The example that I have for you is here how many authors are there and how many of the notable works are science fiction novels. Okay, so let's see how this works then in the end. So we have the following new expression what we have there. So you see here count and what we do here, we can of course then aggregate over the result that we get here with an aggregation function. We count all the books that are back there. So we say count books which gives us the number of books returned there. And uh, this is a new variable that we then call book count. And the second one, we also want to count all the authors. So we want to count authors. And since, of course, um, an author might be the author of several books, and then we would have, of course, here multiple times the same author, we want to make clear that we are only talking about distinct authors. So we take only the number of unique authors there. And this then will be our author count. Let's have a look at the rest of the query. Again, we are asking here for author. So author should have the occupation writer. And then we say, yeah, we look for their notable works, which are then in the variable books. And then, of course, it should have the genre science fiction again. It's the same query. However, what we are doing here is counting all of the books and counting all of the authors. Let's see how this works. And you see here the result. So the book count, it's simply 526. So we have 526 science fiction novels here. And the author count is 181, which means several books here have been authored by the same author here. OK, interesting to find out. So that's the most simplest aggregation function. That's the counting function. Of course, there are more aggregation functions. If you have, for example, numbers in your result, you can sum them up. Sometimes also it makes sense if you have several numbers for a specific value, you can then also build the average or the minimum or the maximum. And sometimes it doesn't matter. You take them a simple a sample back from all of your results and then you have the sample as an aggregation function, which means it takes by random, by chance, as one of the values that are in that column that you are here um, aggregating within your select query. Okay, that's aggregation functions, but you can do even more with it. So the next thing we are looking at is, of course, again in the aggregation function, what else can we do with it? Look at the following example. Which author wrote how many notable science fiction novels? So this, of course, easily comes up if you see the numbers from the last slide and several authors must have written several or many books. And of course, we want to know that. How do we do that? There we have to aggregate again. For each single author, we have to count the books. How do we do that? We have to distinguish, we have to distinguish of course, all of the authors and we have to aggregate them on the author name level. 
Let's have a look at the query and first we go here into the graph pattern. So again, it's the same as before. We have here author, occupation, writer, we have notable works and of course the notable works should be of type science fiction. And uh, what we do here in the end, so we are looking at the author label. So you remember the service directive we have here available for Wikidata. So it's that Wikibase label function, which gives us back a variable which is called, um, so simply you introduce for all of the variables you have here a label. So that's the NADFS label here and only the English one is taken. And what we can do then over all of the results we have here, we can group the entire results by author label. And for each of this author label, which must be a part of the result explicitly, it has to be there. Um, we then can introduce a count and there we count on all of the books we have then per author as book count. So the books per author are counted and of course we are grouping here all of, of the results according to that column. You could of course also aggregate for several columns, then you would have a hierarchical ordering here of aggregation that is also possible. But first, let's have a look at that one. Here we do simply grouping on author level, counting the books for each single author. And in the, in the end, of course, we give this back in descending order. So we will have the author who wrote the most books at the very first page. Let's have a look what will be result and who will be, let's say, the most prolific author considering here um, sci-fi novels. Oh, that's interesting to see. You see number one here is Stephen King with a book count of 36. That's a lot. Then we have Brandon Sanderson, 15, Margaret Atwood, Margot, Margaret Atwood 15, um, and so on and so on. So here is also H.G. Wells, you might have heard about him, or H.P. Lovecraft with eight books. So interesting to see that there are some authors who are more prolific than other authors. So nice result, I would say. Okay, let's get back. So that was group by aggregate function you see here and that were the results. And of course, please, if you try out this on your own and you get another number there, though, so that Stephen King then probably will be listed with more than 36 books, then probably he has written a new book. That might be the case. Of course, we are recording this here in March and it will be published then in October and it's a lot of time and Wikidata is continuously changing. So therefore these uh, results of course are also subject for change. Simply then to keep it together, Sparkle 1.1 provides also more aggregate functions. We have already talked about that, some average, minimum and maximum, sample also. And there is something which is called group concat, which concatenates values with a designated string. So you can really transform your result or your output in a specific way how it should look like. So much for more complex Sparkle queries. In the next part of the lecture, we will dive deeper into so-called subselects and property paths.